What's up, everybody? Justin here with my AEW Fight for the Fallen review. The show just ended. Went like well over three hours with the pre-show. Even though the pre-show was only like uh, 45 minutes. But anyways, first let's get to my uh, predictions, how I did for Fight for the Fallen. My predictions, I predicted uh, six matches. When I did my predictions, I only knew of six matches. There were nine. Nine matches. So three I did not predict. But uh, six matches I did. My predictions, I went five for one. Five for one in what I predicted. Five wins I predicted right and one wrong. So I went five for one out of nine matches. Again, I didn't know that three of these matches were going to happen until like two days ago. So up first on the pre-show, we had... Uh, by the way, I still have not watch, watched Evolve. I want to a lot because it was from the ECW arena and it, I heard really good things about Evolve in this show. I uh, asked a buddy of mine on Twitter how was it so far. He said it was really, really good. So up first on the pre-show, we had Sonny Kiss take on the librarian. Shh. And with his other librarian, the female librarian, Leva Bates, my God, she looked hot. She had like a skirt on, and my God, she looked good. Anyways, uh, Peter Avalon against Sunny Kiss on the pre-show was up first. Sunny Kiss came out, did like a dance, uh, dance number, dance routine. With the Jaguars uh, cheerleaders, that was pretty fun. He got a big pop. Sonny Kiss was pretty damn over. Sonny Kiss wins with a leg drop, a split. He like, did a split and a leg drop off the second rope for the one, two, three. Sonny Kiss is your winner. Up next was uh, the women's uh, tag team match. One of my favorite matches of the show. Not, I don't know if, it, not my favorite, but one of. So women's tag team action, Nakozima, I think that's how you say her name, Nakozima teaming up with Brie Presley. To take on the team of Britt Baker and Ryu. Or Raiho. Really good women's uh, tag match. It was really good. A tiny bit. Looked a little bit sloppy. Maybe a few botches. So what? Who cares? Botches, again, can happen in any match. Unless you're like a super pro and you don't do botches. Anyways, a really good women's tag match. I really enjoyed it. It was uh, fun to watch. It was entertaining. The uh, Riho is, again, she's tiny as hell, but she is tough and she is dynamite. She's really awesome. Britt Baker, very good. Brie Presley, really good. She came out with the red belt from stardom. She's still, I believe, in stardom. I'm pretty sure she's in stardom because she had one of their titles that she was wearing when she came out. Just a really good women's uh, tag match. Uh, Ni or Nakozima hits like a Frankensteiner and grabs her legs for the one, two, three. Brie Presley and Nakozima win. Again, it was on the pre-show. It was a final match on the pre-show, and it was really good. Look it up on TNT's YouTube or AEW's YouTube. Watch it. It is worth 
I think the women's tag on the pre-show is worth watching if you missed it. So now we go to the main show. The main show up uh, first on the main show was um, a six-man tag, MJF. Sammy Gavallo, or whatever the guy's last name is, who cares? No disrespect to him, I just don't know the guy's last name. MJF, Sammy, and um, Sean Spears up against Jimmy Havoc, Derby Allen, and Joey Janela. I guess uh, at least I heard that uh, Joey Janela and Enzo Amore had a fight or an altercation. Probably not a fight because I don't think either of them could fight. I think I could beat both of their asses. That's how I feel. Anyways, I don't think they know how to fight or have ever been in a fight in their life. Enzo acts like he's tough because he's rap. He's a rapper now. You're not tough. You're little as hell. You're a little man. Uh, anyways, that's my opinion. Maybe I'm dead wrong. Maybe Enzo and Joey Janela could really fight and kick ass. I don't know. I just would bet on myself over them that I could kick their ass. Or at least get a lot of punches in. But again, who cares? I'm not trying to promote violence. Saying I could beat up uh, wrestlers or former wrestlers. My point is, I don't think Joey Janela and Enzo got in a real fist fight. And I don't think they're that tough outside the ring. Inside the ring, they got my respect because they took all the bumps and all the punishment of being on the road. So anyways, I actually, I think I respect, I think I have more respect for Enzo than I Joey Janela because I believe Joey Janela, the guy's kind of a garbage wrestler. I've seen a lot of crap garbage wrestling he's done. That's not wrestling. That's just stupidity. It doesn't mean you're tough. That means you're stupid. So, anyways, Derby Allen, Jimmy Havoc, Joey Janela, and Enzo had an altercation at a Blink-182 concert. I think on Tuesday, last Tuesday. I think there was they were pushing each other, and that was it. I don't think anybody got in a fist fight. Or I don't think they got in a fight, and neither of them kicked the other's ass. So it was a good six-man tag. It was, enter it was entertaining. MJF, Sammy, Sean Spears wins. When uh, Sean Spears gets a pin. And I was happy to see him get the pinfall victory. Up next. Excuse me while I almost threw up in my mouth. <clears throat> so anyways, um. Up next, women's action. The only singles women's match on the show. I don't know when they're going to have... I think they're going to reveal a women's title at All Out. It's about damn time you do that. I don't think they're going to crown a champion till TNT, but I believe they're going to reveal a women's title at All Out on August 31st. Brandy Rhodes up against Allie. It was a decent women's match. It wasn't bad and it wasn't great. It was okay. I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed both of these women. They both look damn good. And at least Brandy Rhodes is not the best wrestler, but at least she tries. She tries to get better. And she has gotten better. So uh out comes Awesome Kong. During the match, Awesome Kong comes out, gets a big reaction, big pop. The crowd was pretty hot for most of the show. Like 60%, 70% of the show, they are pretty hot for. 80% of the show, they are pretty on fire for. 
pretty loud. But they got kind of burnt out probably because it was pretty hot outside. And the little arena they were in or building or where it was outside, I believe, also. It was like a roof over the ring. A roof and open air space, so it's probably really hot inside of it. So I don't blame the crowd for getting burnt out, but whatever. Brandy Rhodes Alley had an okay match. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good. Or it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. Awesome Kong at ringside distracts. Alley Brandy Rhodes wins. I expected it. I predicted Brandy would win. And then they attack, I believe they, or Awesome Kong started attacking Allie, about to pick her up in her crucifix slam. Out comes Asia Kong. Asia Kong comes out, faces off with Awesome Kong. She leaves the ring with Brandy. We're going to get the Battle of the Kongs. Battle of the Kongs. Probably at All Out, Asia Kong against Awesome Kong. That will be awesome. The battle of the freaking Kongs. So again, Brandy Rhodes won. Up next, we had a bonus matchup. Triple Threat Tag Team, the Dark Order. Some uh, kind of overweight guy with a mask and a bald guy. I don't know their names. I forgot them. And a whole bunch of masked men that come out with them. It's a, I think the Dark Order is a stupid gimmick. Yeah, they're trying something new, but I, I think it's a bad gimmick. It's stupid. You put a whole bunch of guys under masks that are going to be nobodies. It's stupid. I will say the bald guy in Dark Order, he has talent. He actually can work. And the guy is kind of overweight. He, I guess he could work too. Because he did hit a swan top. The Dark Order against Jack Evans and Helico and uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. And oh my fucking God, Luchasaurus was the star of this triple threat. Luchasaurus tore it up. He did great, he did awesome. Guy looked like a beast. Luchasaurus was on fire. He was a shining star in this triple threat tag. Luchasaurus, so damn good. What he did was so damn good and fun to watch. Luchasaurus, he took over the whole match. And it was awesome. Jungle Boy also did really good. And man... It is just so sad that uh, Jungle Boy's father, Luke Perry, so damn sad he's not alive to see his son be part of a major wrestling company. He never got to see Jungle Boy in an AEW match. That is really heartbreaking. Luke Perry, the guy's a great actor. The guy's damn good. And I was a fan of his. Still, rest in peace, Lou Perry. Really, just a tremendous loss. Not just to me, but to his son, Jungle Boy, and his family and friends. And just to anybody and everybody that enjoyed Lou Perry and the work he did. It's a really sad, sad, sad loss. So, uh, Dark Order wins. I want to put them over. I want to put over Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. I like them as a team. They're really good together. They have great chemistry. I think they could be future AEW tag champs. So, Dark Order wins. I'm not a fan of the gimmick. And I hope they don't win the tag title. So up next was uh, Hangman, Adam Page. Hangman, Adam Page against Kip Sabian. I said it on Twitter. 
some fat white guy that's balding. I think he has glasses also. The guy's always at NXT tapings at Full Sail. He's always in the first row on camera. He's like a tall, fat, white guy with glasses. That uh, You should just shave your head, dude. He looks like you're balding. Whatever. Um, Maybe he's not balding. But uh, anyways, the, 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 that stupid guy that's at like every NXT taping, he goes up to uh, Kip Sabian was outside the ring and this uh, fat white guy goes up to him. He's a, I, I called him like the NXT guy. That's why I called him on Twitter. He's not me on Twitter. He's not WWE NXT guy. I don't know what who he is on Twitter. I don't care. And I don't care if someone shows him this video. I don't know why they bother, but because I'm just, I'm a nobody. I'm a guy. I'm, I think I'm more than a nobody, but I'm just a wrestling fan making videos on Twitter. Not on Twitter, on YouTube. Um, anyways, maybe that fat white guy has a YouTube channel. I don't know, but I'm not a nobody. At least I have over 110,000 views. Anyways, like NXT, I don't know, super fan, whatever he is. The guy's yelling at Kip Sabian right in his face. Like, what the fuck are you doing? First off, I've been to many wrestling shows, a ton, and I would never go in a wrestler's face, like right up to his lips and face and yell, be yelling at him right in the face like I want to make out with him. What the fuck were you doing? You deserve this. So Kip Sabian, he's yelling at Kip Sabian, yelling, I don't know what he was yelling at, but he kept yelling at him right like this close to his face. Now, if I was a wrestler, I would get pissed. I would either pie face the guy or spit on him or... I don't think I spit on him, but... That's just me. I have a temper. Anyways, uh... So, the guy was, like, too damn close to Kip Sabian. Like, what the fuck? Just because you're in the first row doesn't mean you have the right to invade the guy's privacy and get in his face like you're tough. You're not tough. You're a fat fan. You're a fat fanboy. So he gets in his face and keeps saving this made me pop. I popped. He like kisses him on the lips almost. That was hilarious. And the fat white guy backs up like... Like... He was all embarrassed. That was hilarious. So good good on you, Kip Sabian, for doing that to that fan of fat the fat boy. Good for you for doing that to the fat boy. That made me pop. So uh Kip Sabian, Hangman, Adam Page had a good match. It went a little bit too long. Adam Page did a moot salt and he was holding his uh, left knee. Like he messed up his knee and tore something. I hope he didn't. I don't think he did. But anyways, uh, Hangman Adam Page. You don't got to do that mood salt all the time on the floor. Because I don't want to see you get injured. Adam Page is a great talent. Anyways, Hangman Adam Page wins. He should have won. He's going after the title at all out. So up next, we had, what was next? Uh, tag Team Action, SCU against the Lucha Bros. This was really good. This was really good. I, uh, I predicted the Lucha Bros would win. They did win. It was a really good tag match. And uh, they bring a ladder in. After the Lucha Bros win, they bring a ladder and throw it at Frankie Kazarian. I felt bad for him. He, he started holding his arm. That was not good. Throwing a ladder at Frankie, 
Like, what if it broke his arm? Come on. Shouldn't be throwing ladders at wrestlers. I get it. It's a dangerous sport, but still. That will suck if Scorpio Sky or Frankie Kazarian got a concussion or got injured from that ladder. Lucha Bros climb up on the ladder, get on the mic. Pentagon Jr.'s going off on the mic, calling out the Young Bucks. Phoenix is going off on the mic saying, we are the best tag team in the world. We want you, Young Bucks. We want you at All Out in a ladder match. So it's probably booked. Young Bucks once again against the Lucha Bros at All Out in a ladder match. That's going to be pretty good. So I don't know what else they could do. I mean, in their first match at Double or Nothing, they did it all. I guess they're going to do it all again off a ladder this time. Or with a ladder. So now we have uh, Kenny Omega up next. Or before Kenny Omega in SEMA. Uh, or Zima. Not Zima, but SEMA. Before that, Jericho comes. Uh, Jericho came out and attacked uh, Hangman Page. He had a mask on. He attacked him, beat him up. Uh, Hangman Page got his eye cut open above his eye. Jericho hit his uh, finisher, the elbow. What the hell is it called? Uh, Judas something? I don't remember. But Jericho hit his elbow finisher on Hangman Page. And they showed a close-up. His eyes busted open. He's bleeding. It looked legit, like he did not blade. So, uh, again, Jericho attacked Hangman Page, and he pulls off the mask, and it was Jericho. So, Jericho comes out again, dressed in his gear, his leather jacket, his cowboy hat, his uh, spikes on his jacket. Before Kenny Omega's match, Jericho comes out with a promo. Talks about Hangman Page and rips a crowd. I mean, ripped Jacksonville big time. And said, maybe I should call it Jerk Offville. That was hilarious. But Jericho is just, the guy's a master on the microphone. The guy is just money on the mic. I would say Jericho's a better talker than a uh, wrestler. I think he's a better talker. He puts butts in seats from just cutting promos. So Jericho's promo, it was uh, good. So then up next, Kenny Omega against Sema. They had a pretty good match. But I'm going to say it, I don't care if I get hate. Kenny Omega to me is boring. The guy's boring, in my opinion. So, uh, they had a good match, but still, Kenny Omega's boring to me. Uh, Sema, I thought, should have won, but I understand why he didn't. Kenny Omega's had two matches in AEW. He hasn't won yet. Now he's won. Kenny Omega wins. I thought we would see a John Moxley run in, but he wasn't there. He wasn't in the house. So, now the main event. So, uh, main event time. Brothers versus brothers. The Young Bucks against the Brotherhood of Cody and Dustin Rhodes. A good main event. Pretty damn good tag match. I enjoyed it. It, uh, I don't know, the crowd. The crowd was into it, but. They could have been more into it. it. It had a big match feel, but I don't know. It didn't feel like it should have been the main event. I don't know why. Nothing against these four guys. Again, it was a good tag match. I enjoyed it. Cody and Dustin worked uh, really well together. Did a lot of double team moves. The Bucks did a lot of double team moves. And the Young Bucks actually win. They win with the Melzer driver. And 
Cody laid down for the Bucks and put them over. Uh, good on Cody. Even though I thought Cody and Dustin should have won, but whatever. I understand why the Bucks won so they can look strong going into All Out. But still, I wanted Cody and Dustin to win. I was cheering for the Brotherhood. Uh, Cody, and I will say Cody and Dustin, the Bucks being in the ring with them made them look fucking better than they are, in my opinion. So the Young Bucks win the main event. Uh, they Then the Bucks get on the mic and say they love Cody and Dustin and they are one of the best tag teams that they have ever been in the ring with and that they were just having fun making fun of them. Like, they didn't mean it. Stuff like that. So, uh, then out comes a lot of the roster. Kenny, Omega, Brandy. I can't remember who else. Uh, Tony Khan's uh, father. The guy from the charity that AEW's giving the money to for the gun violence uh, charity for gun violence survivors. So, AEW and Cody, they have a check, a big giant check. Again, Tony Khan's uh, dad is out there holding it. Uh, God bless his dad because if uh, he didn't agree to give Cody and put a lot of his money behind AEW, I don't think Tony Khan's putting all his money into AEW. I don't. I think his father put a lot of his money into it. Like, to make it survive for, I don't know, at least three to five year plan. I know he's, I believe I heard Tony Khan's father put in like $200 million to make sure AEW can get off the ground. And uh, they got a good start because TNT is going to be paying half. Or no, I think TNT is going to be paying for all of the production every week. But they're going to be splitting it, I think. Splitting the cost of the TV every week. So at least AEW won't go broke having to pay for live TV every week. TNT is going to help them out. So that's a really good deal. Because AEW's only ran three shows. It's uh, really amazing they got a TV deal without running a show. Because they had a TV deal before Double or Nothing. So, uh, again, if it wasn't for Tony Khan and his father, we wouldn't have AEW. We wouldn't have any legit major wrestling company competition for WWE. Because they are a major company. They're on TNT already. Or they're starting on TNT very soon in October. October is fast. October is like less than, uh, less than three months away. So uh, they present the check. They raised 150000 for gun violence and survive or to fight gun violence and for the survivors that's a really great thing AEW did and then Cody had to fire shots again at WWE I understand Triple H started it when he called AEW a piss ant company but now Cody's got to continue to to bring up the competition you didn't have to bring it up it's stupid to bring it up. Like, why? But whatever. It must really bother Cody that Evolve had their show on WWE Network. And WWE and NXT or NXT UK or Evolve, they're going to continue. WWE is going to continue Putting shows on the network live against AEW. I guarantee it. They're going to continue doing it. Why? 
because they can. They have their own network. They can and they have a ton of talent. So they will. They're not going to lay down. I think tri Triple H is, I think it's Triple H's idea to put Evolve on the network. Damn sure wasn't Vince's. So, um, you think WWE during these AEW live shows on Saturdays and probably when they start on TNT, WWE's going to, I don't know what they're going to do. Probably try to put NXT and 205 Live against AEW on TNT Live. I don't know. But they'll do something. WWE, they're not going to lay down. You say, well, why'd they have to run Evolve on the same night as Fight for the Fall? Why? Because they can. They have their own network. That's why. And everybody, I thought every wrestling fan wanted competition. Well, you got it. The war is started. I don't even consider it a war, but I don't know what other word to use. The competition, the fight, has started. As long as AEW runs pay-per-view live shows, WWE is going to try to counter over and over and over. They're not going to just lay down, especially when they have their own network and they can put any live event on their network that they want. Maybe this month is Evolve. Well, August is NXT TakeOver UK. TakeOver UK is the same day as All Out. So again, they're not going to lay down. In October, they're not going to lay down. They'll probably put something new and live on the network against AEW on TNT. This ends my review for Fight for the Fallen. My final grade for Fight for the Fallen. I give it a... I give it a C+. Plus. I uh, yeah, I give it a C plus. It could be close to a B or B minus, but I'll say C plus. I don't think it's as good as a uh, Fighter Fest because Fighter Fest had a lot, but still, Fight for the Fallen. AEW did a great thing giving all the proceeds, all the revenue they got from ticket sales to the gun violence uh, charity. That is a great move. That is a great thing they did. That's really a great thing they did for the community of uh, Jacksonville. But again, uh, about competition and evolve running the same day as the same night as fight for the fallen i don't get why people would be upset i'm happy to watch two different companies two different wrestling uh, brands go at it i'm happy about it i'll watch evolve and i'll enjoy it i watched fight for the fallen and i enjoyed it i'm gonna watch extreme rules and enjoy it for what it is, good or bad. I'm going to watch Raw, SmackDown, NXT, Impact, pay-per-views, and enjoy them. AEW, All Out. I'm going to enjoy it when I watch it. NXT TakeOver UK in August. I'm going to enjoy it. I would enjoy New Japan, but I don't have time to watch it. And I decide to skip it because I watch enough wrestling. So, again, my final grade is a C plus for raising that money for gun violence uh, charity. They get an A plus for doing that. That is fucking awesome. That is really great. Uh, WWE, I don't believe, has ever raised money for gun violence. Yes, I'm sure they give a lot of money to charities, but not gun violence. And they should, because 
in my opinion, gun violence is a epidemic in the United States. It is out of control. I hear gunshots all the time in my neighborhood. A lot. People get murdered like every single day in the summers. It's not good. Gun violence is everywhere. And it needs to be stopped. It really does. Man, the, the bad people, the criminals, and the people that are just nuts and want to kill each other, they should not get their hands on guns, period. They don't belong to have, they, they have no business having guns. If, if you're so stupid, these people, anybody, oh my God, man. I could really start ranting about gun violence because it really, really upsets me. It's out of control in the United States. It is out of control. Uh, thank God, I nothing against Chicago, but I'm glad I don't live there because they're, they got more gun violence than Milwaukee. And Milwaukee's really no better. We have a ton of murders by guns. But anyways, the people killing each other, it's over arguments. If you're that stupid in the head, you're going to fight over someone taking your soda or drink or someone taking your bubble gum or some stupid fucking arguments or arguing over a woman you're fighting over. If you're that stupid to get in an argument and then you want to go kill the person after an argument, you should not have a gun, period. What happened to put the goddamn guns down and put your fists up and fight each other with your fists? That's how you resolve arguments and fighting with someone, arguing with someone. You put your goddamn hands up and fight like a man. That is a coward to use a gun on somebody. It's a coward. And it's a scum of the earth murderer. So anyways, uh, fight for the fall. I'm sorry for going off topic. I had to get that off my chest. You are a coward and you're scum if you use a gun against another human. I don't care how much you hate the person. You should not ever want to shoot somebody because you're that angry at them. Again, fight. If you're that mad at them, fight. Have a good old street fight. Whoever wins and can't get up, well, then it should be squashed and over right there. Not saying you have a street fight where you kill the person with your hands, but where they can't get up and they don't want to fight anymore, then it would be over. Anyways, a fight for the fallen in the books. Uh, I don't apologize for ranting about gun violence because... Needs to be said, it's out of control, and it uh, really, really bothers me and upsets me. So anyways, Fight for the Fallen, in the books, I gave it a C+. Plus. I'll see you for Extreme Rules with my Extreme Rules review. Bye for now.